it, it's another draw for him. I'm, I'm kind of 50 50 here. This is a Doom that has a lot of value because really the only thing he needs to worry about is dooming the Lina. No one else really cares, and Lina hates having to be doomed if she's going to be the right click, the right clicking souls. At least we've got different heroes all across the board. Viper may be the only mainstay, but it's going to be a different Viper. It's a support Viper. Seeing how it all goes down, elimination on the line. A winner moves forward. Loser is out of contention for the International 10. Prepare Go for ahead and battle. take it away, Dan. There it is. Tsunami, like you said, we're not going to move on. They will face Room Esports or Galaxy Racer. We are yet to have that series. In fact, that one is going to be up after this. Game oh, my nice. What a series we have. Game three on the line. And I'll, we've seen previously in both games, it's been execration yeah, we've been the one awful. have an early advantage in these games. Do we feel like that's going to be the same case here in this third game? Well, Obi Neon are trying to make sure that that doesn't happen. Full five man smoke. They realize the importance of being able to take this key advantage. They're going to walk into this ward though, Ooh. CTM. They place it down. It's completely scouted out. So. Or gold going over the way of Yoe. I wonder if he's going to give the sentry ward over and maybe allow him to just get that little bit of extra experience, or if it could just be looking to go over to BDZ. It's going to be very important for him to pick up that uh, level two as quickly as possible, considering you are against the POS5 Viper. Before we see that ward actually get e warded, it's a pretty cool ward. Is that new? One of the, the Dire Observer? I don't think I've seen that before. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's the battle pass one. Oh, okay. Makes sense. All seeing eye dogs. The battle like, begins. In Soma. I feel like that's one thing that we don't have too much of, like some really cool ward cosmetic. I'm still using like a using like some sort of fish one, I think. I don't know. Um, but with that, I, I actually like the even the small things, like BDZ made sure to shoot that arrow first onto the high ground. It did end up scouting out the Wraith King, so they were thinking. Maybe this is mind games. Maybe they're just like, oh, that's the reason why it might be warded, not because we had our observer ward down first. So maybe that'll save that ward on the top side. Oh, it's another Viper game and another tri lane. Even though Viper is as a five, Execration bringing the aggressive tri lane with Talos, BDZ, NRR. I, I do want to ask yes, South America are one of the better regions to play this Viper as a position five. We see Southeast Asia do it at all? I mean, you don't want to say they do do it at all, but it's certainly not to the same level of effectiveness. It just seems like uh, an SA staple. Dyer's it's going to be good at bullying out this uh, this Marana, but oh, actually, they get the stunning onto CTM. More than likely, your first blood. Dyer's Can I get both Corrius here too? Oh, Junior yeah. and Lion using the, losing their Corrius and losing their life as well on CTM. So you wanted at least Natsumi was farming away, getting that solo experience in lane, but that's not the trade that you want to give up for it. We got a yeah, second I mean, it... in that tri lane. How, how do we feel like this mid matchup's going to fare? The Leshtrak versus the Lina. Both heroes that deal an incredible amount of magical damage early. Yes, but the thing is, it, it severely, with this Lesh pick, hinders the Yokage's ability to be, make these rotations early on and secure Neon's early game, because you leave that lane, and if the wave is anywhere near, like, midway pushed, or even, just a bit closer towards your tower, you can take a lot of damage to your tier 1, and you know that this uh, is Natsumi, who is going to be wanting to farm. I don't think this is the sort of game where you go into something like an armor. And down bot, we have this solo matchup. Enryu and Nico. Feels like it's a pretty good lane for Enryu. I mean, any melee melee matchup, Doom. His armor's a lot better now with that recent change. He's got five base armor, so we'll see how that's going to come into play here. Zhao. Oh, he eats the arrow. Another one on the mark here for BDZ. Looks like Genuel is going to be able to make it back underneath the tier one tower. Radiance Courier has been killed. Gets the return kill on the courier, very nicely done. Still level one though on uh, BDZ, so he has to be careful with how far forward he's extending himself here. I, I think the story of this game is how much faith Obi Neon are putting into their newest recruit, Enryu, because taking out this Wyvern at the start of team fights is going to be 
I don't want to say their win condition, but it's going to heavily, heavily tilt things in their favor if they're able to remove that factor killed. from the equation, considering all the right-click damage that they have. Natsumi, Slada, you've got the Lena as well, who's more likely being into the uh, the right-click build. Still going to go the Yule Scepter, but still, you'd need to transition into being that right-clicking core if you've got all of this Minus armor, and if you want to stay relevant into the later stages of the game. Oh, that arrow the market early bdz if he can continue some of these uh, arrows hitting the mark then uh, that could be a, a good sign for what we're going to see as this game moves on forward but how do we feel like this try lane is, is filling up is, is there a team that is getting the advantage at the moment mm. i mean i feel like you're you're reasonably happy with this on side just because i mean uh, Mirana is one of those heroes that needs a lot more levels to be able to do what she does. Whereas, you know, with the uh, the Viper, all you really need is the one point in the Nether Toxin, and you can bully people out quite easily. You can even, you know, shove out creep waves. You can see he's getting a nice pull happening here. So as long as this creep wave continues to stay around this uh, dire tier one tower, I think that to me is going to be totally fine with how this is panning out. He's 24 losses at the moment. Racer, along with the chainmail, recognizing that he's going to need these stats to keep himself in the aggressive lane that we have. It'll be a lot of action at the moment, and eventually, already we're seeing a lot of the stacks as well in the jungle. Here is like less track, the lean off, is it? Double at the ancients for radiant, double at the heart as well, and uh, I believe for dire, just have double at the medium by the outpost here. So not as much emphasis for your but another thing. The, the fact that they, they actually blocked out the small camp here against Lena. This is something that I saw a lot of emphasis on uh, in previous games against the Enchantress, just to take away her effect. Yopage on the Lena, this is a hero that very much thrives on shoving up the lane, going back, arming up the jungle, especially that small. So, nice awareness from Execration. I mean, it's so hard to do it right because you've been in this tri lane and you don't have a ton of levels. Nico, he's gonna fall. You see this solo matchup, it is not going well. 24 to 13, it's level 6 now as well. And, and coming back into this lane, yeah. it's actually so difficult. You, you've got minus 10 armor as mid, go Paj, falling incredibly low. A fairy, nice, <laughs> oh, oh, CTM, what a target on the TP. They line up for the double. Thank you. And that's the sort of play that can completely turn things around. I was thinking because of the Radiant lower levels as a result of this tri lane that, you know, you wouldn't be able to make this rotation towards the mid lane on CTM to try and kill your way who had just TP back to the lane. So if you kill him off, that's a lot of his uh, time not being used. They did a good job being able to block out this small camp and would have brought Yopage back into this game because still right now he's sitting towards the bottom of the network. Should fall mid. Slow thanks to the Arctic Burn, extra level in it, sets up for the arrow. And nice rotation well. as well, they've got a catapult wave, but oh. Yorpage is just going to turn. Drops the Laguna, Yorpage incredibly difficult to bring down thanks to the one charges, but will still fall nonetheless. Another rotation from the support, Jean Yuel getting involved to kill the Marana. That is kind of busted though, that the Diabolic Edict continues <laughs> after you're dead. Like, so this tower is basically half HP already, less than half HP, because of that Siege creep. So good recognition of that by OB Neon to be able to rotate through and make sure that you're not losing a ton of your map control this early. That could have been completely different as well, the fact they had double bounty for Yopage to be able to refill up before you know, that, that Lion TP in just to keep his life. It was uh, the three minute bounty was still there and the six minute bounty was just coming up. So Yopage was actually able to still stay in the lane. And if he wasn't there, that's potentially killing a support into the tower. Just the beautiful uh, movement from Execration, bringing the supports with that catapult timing. Two points in the edict, it could have been disastrous early for Neon. What? Withstand. It is he's here on the bottom side. He's had to walk all the way down here to make sure he's not giving away his TP scroll. That's one thing Neon really like to do. They like to place these deep observer wards either behind or right in front of T1 towers so that they know when they can make their more aggressive rotations. And uh, with this one here, that's why they're not just getting right up in there, hitting the tier one tower. The siege creep's gonna die because of it, but. Better the siege creep die than you. 
seem like at the moment the the tri lane of course it is crumbled with all the emphasis that we've seen on mid and now some of the emphasis put on bot as well nico is going to go for this midas build but Leon, they've got the sights on the stacks triangle is your pause with that haze yeah you want to just try and maybe see if you can get a kill maybe even as well yeah, he took the three big creeps of all those three different stacks there. So nicely done. He gets an Observer Ward. Well, going his way, Jao's going to pick up the gold. and Looking nice. He's got a fluffy hat Maybe coming out to him as well. You know that that's the real meta. I see when they use his first Doom. More difficult on a hero like Natsumi. Ready? Well, in fact, they don't need a Kijiawe. He's got plenty of damage and also plenty of mana left in the tank to manage. This is the start of the turn. Corny Brook, not enough. New burst potential coming through thanks to Laguna Blade, but there's the Doom. It's onto the Mina, but where are the stuns? Moving incredibly fast. It's the Fury Soul, two points along with the Wind Lake. So Lena makes it back to safety. We'll end up losing CTM though. CTM kind of interesting because he had a tango left he could have gotten underneath the tower maybe if they dived in super far maybe gone for a turnaround but with that doom still having the lingering effects of it not feeling confident and not wanting to even put Yopage in any kind of risk of going down yeah, that's an incredible play from neon actually like if you lose natsumi twice there they would have then taken the t1 tower pop it made it much more difficult for him to farm in the jungle. Now you see where the, the paws are playing just opposite sides of the map. Xiao will fall top. Just trying to soak up whatever experience he can at the moment. But an incredible TP. Wraith King goes bot, takes that tier one tower. Now he's got more camps to play with. And naturally the Wraith King is someone who wants to be playing around this bottom side of the map, around the, the triangle camps as well because of the Ancient. So love the play from Neon. Yeah, and good warding as well, right? They're setting up this Observer Vision to make sure that uh, all of the different Wraith King skeletons are going to continuously push forward. They're always going to start running down towards the lane, but if there's neutral creeps to hit, they'll divert to get that, and it just speeds up your farming efficiency by an incredible amount. We'll still end up losing the top tower, but I feel like if you're trading against a Leshrac, you're more than happy. Not at all. You also see that Ryu's about to have a blink completed, his top of the net worth. There's going to be a bit of a timing here for Neon with this blink where they can get active, knowing that, I mean, Doom's going Midas, so the looking to scale a lot more into this late game. All eyes on how Neon want to try and utilize this blink here, because they've got a lot of pickoff capabilities. You can run a duo with either the Slaughter Lion, Slaughter Lena, even kind of the Viper as well. There's a lot of pairings they can have right now on the side of Dial. I mean, he's feeling real confident. He walked right underneath that outpost so they could see where he was, walked into the lane that next to the tier two tower. tower. He is far away from the rest of his team and he does not have ultimate. And in fact, he just <laughs> the arrow. Natsumi will fall. That's a big, big kill to pick up. His first death of the game. And the Wraith King was starting to get a, a bit out of hand if he was able to continue with that steroid thanks to the skellies. But that gives Life Stealer a little bit of time to catch up. Leads, this is the armlet completed here for Palos. Yeah, he's the one that needs to be farping super early on, joining a lot of these fights, of course. With the DDZ Mirana, he's already got the Spirit Vessel halfway. Burn halfway towards the Spirit Vessel. Oh, life so good to Got him! Spawn and early blink tag coming out. Up. Still sticking around yeah, he's... though. His team on his back. Uh oh. Stays too long. Comes out on Nico. Maybe CTM can get another save him, Rabbit. CTM. Yeah, I, I don't think so at all. Ah, they even get the curse. So even CTM is going to end up falling here. Nice rotation from Execration. I mean, you lose Palos, but you get some revenge as Nico picks up a double. Little mistakes. I mean, CTM, unnecessary death. Natsumi before probably shouldn't have died. You know, they hadn't shown themselves on the map in quite a while. You'd given them all the information you could possibly need in the world. And I mean, you had an Observer Ward, right? And Arrow is a pretty slow moving stun. He could have sidestepped that. Maybe it would have given his team enough time to rotate down and save him, but it's gonna be the case. Taking this ancient stack. is gonna scout it out though. Hmm. Am I trying to kill BDZ though? Shadow. Beneath that observer ward? Yeah. Maybe Nico bot. Moonlight Shadow used. 
while people were in vision of creep waves and, and observe wards, so always having to be quite careful about that. CTM is going to walk on forward a little bit. Nobody was coming there because of that more recent observer ward placed by BDZ, but this is the way that Execration like to play. In the first, like, 12 to 17 minutes, they put all of their vision in aggressive spots, especially against teams that like to, you know, make these five-man rotations like Neon. Theo Page was going to try and drop the LSA after the duels. Seeing these games start to slow down, though, as soon as I say that, Neon, they're going to smoke up and, and head to the top side Radiant here. They're trying standing. to catch up Palos as, as life still. Dyer's top tower is under attack. It's just all about enabling your cores to continue on farming. You've got a Doom with a Midas, so you need to make sure that he, you know, is able to take maximum advantage of that. You can never die with both the Devourer and Midas on the cores. And were you found the Wyvern. Bit of an easier target with the Marana's leap capability to escape. Great curse. Locks in all four. Are up. Two curses in a row on CTM is... Why is he using them on me? But... Kills, you're happy with that. It also it is a there smoke for nothing down bot though. You go. Trouble. It's got the team starting to swing down to help out. And I even have to drop the Doom as well, Januel, a little bit too He's late. Gonna continue? Now but the sprint's expired. So Slider is gonna run himself back to safety. But Neon, they don't have any more rotations. It's just Yao that can try and protect the starter through the doom, and he's going to be able to do so at a high extent. So we'll find a one for one. You're happy with that? The doom use for a position five death. That's value. That is such great value right there. And even with that kill, he's going to bring himself closer to finishing up the four staff. Fantastic against the doom, just getting away from the Leshrac as well. How do we feel like? either team is wanting this game to go like is is one team happy with this slow status quo that we have at the moment well i mean it has to you have to think neon right because they they have the relic picked up not quite finished into the radiance just yet but th that's a farming item you know it's good against the likes of you know it's okay against the life stealer but i mean realistically that is what you're gonna jump farming. in yahweh Defensively, they're gonna have to try and turn to deal with RR, and the Laguna Blade will cut him down. Nico, so wanting a little bit of revenge, unfortunately, there's no more backup. Radiance middle tower. Fortunate there, the Wyvern was about two seconds off having that Winter's Curse available. Could have seen a third good one in a row. They do still save their tier one tower, though. Yeah, the, uh, the use of the, all of that lane shove, making sure that the siege creep wasn't a factor. BKB on your punch. Okay, kind of forcing them to use the Doom into him to make sure that they're limiting his impact. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Yeah, she... <laughs> That's if we got the tower still. There was a couple of heroes nearby, they're just, oh, I'm not going to deny it. What's this Wyvern set to? Is that another one of the new ones from the... From the... That... Sure is. Yeah. That is up. I use the wings. I keep the, uh, the old helmet. It's still good for me. Ooh. Awesome looking Wyvern. Might be just all full as anything. Ryu. And Ryu is going to show on this bot side. It's under the cover of the smoke and the moonlight shadow, but he's hiding. He's hiding. So the spidey senses. Now this I'm is liking time. this uh, Ags purchase as well, by the way, for mm. uh, Slada. He's still a fair way away, but it's going to be nice. Slada. What do you feel like is, uh, why do you like the arguments here on this battle? I mean, you just need to be able to stay on top of the Lash Rack as much as possible, right? And uh, it's going to allow you to do that with all of the status resist, magic resist that's provided from it. Is it I don't know if it gives magic resist. I think regen, armor, yeah, and the status. status though. That's also uh, another big timing is the Radiance pickup from Natsumi. So we might actually see My. Neon a little bit more active here. He's also got an extra point in the, uh, in the reincarnation. That'd be nice. Means that maybe he could farm a little bit more aggressively with the uh, only the two minutes on the reincarnation as opposed to the three and a half. This lucky they're going to get with some of these neutrals as well. I mean, they've they've been a bit more jungle centric as you do on Dyer, the dire side, Oscar. which means that they've been able to pick up a few more of those tier two items. No, uh, 
Be praying for that paladin sword, of course. Already having the life steal and Radiant's building into the Sange next. And oh, you've even got your full skeleton Radiant army with no there. glyph available. Actually, just pop, sorry. Dire structures are fortified. Oh, that siege creep, even on 7 HP. Do a lot of work towards this bot side. Jow, just place behind him. Dyer's middle the four staff at the ready. Attack. Radiant's yeah, fast enough, though. Attack. The tower's falling pretty low. Jimmy's got back up. How do they start the fight here? Forward one, Snicker, Blink, and Ryu. Great for Potter with his crush. The curse instantly. And they walk into two. Sets up for the arrow and the split earth onto Blink CTM. Hasn't been able to line up an incredible earth spike. It's a loose the reincarnation. And it's the best right now for Neon. The best is out for the bonus health. Nico, he's still got the Doom as well. They don't even need it for this team fight. He's going to be able to find the Wraith King to the northern side. And Yonpa's there's the Doom. It'll come into play to cancel the TP. Four down and no casualties for the Radiant lineup. Uh, it's just these tiny things changing things around. The four staff was used, actually pushed him down into the trees, not able to get Dyer's away just in time. It was a good attack. two or three man slithering crush coming through, but just the follow up, it allows you to Radiant set up so easily for attack. that Leshrac stun, especially if it's onto these two heroes that still can take a lot of magic damage in the Slada and the Wraith King. Saw there, like Tsunami was highlighting it before. They try to put all the burst in onto your way, doesn't matter. You've got your Pulse Nova still going, you've got your Edict still going, Cold Embrace is leveled up to maximum, he's got the Holy Locket and the Infest Bomb as well, able to keep him perfectly healthy. So, again, Wyvern has to die, and I feel like you can't just turn around and expect to kill the Leshrac in a fight like that when you don't have full information and understanding of the team's rotations. And it doesn't feel like Wyvern's going to die through the slaughter jump. I, I think they need another blink. And I mean, you see Natsumi has it queued up after the Sunge, but this is going to give Execration a decent window here where the Wyvern should be very difficult to bring down. He's going to go a blink himself just to make sure that he can stay completely away from all of these team fights. That's his job. It's basically when these BKBs start to come out for Neon, he needs to be able to blink in, use the Winter's Curse after the BKB has been used to essentially nullify it. Or if um, if the Leshrac, maybe the Doom, are getting jumped on and a lot of spells pumped into them, just use your Cold Embrace. Jump in to save them without any risk of yourself dying. bottom tower is under attack. We'll get there tier two though. Execration you might look to try and start control the top Radiant's side here is Nico. You just complete the BKB, top of the net worth on the Doom, even though that laning stage didn't go as well as what you would be hoping Nico here. So he's still... He's going to have a lot of impact in this elimination game. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. How they're going to... Dyer's deal with this overwhelming attack. threat that seems to have come. I mean, the, the Leshrac hasn't had the most amazing game by any stretch, but you've still been able to pick up your Eternal Shroud in combination together with the Yule Scepter, and you've got the supporting cast to enable you. Dyer's I think Yowei's game is going to be just fine, even though he's sitting fifth on the net worth. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Close his palace. Feel like, uh... Yeah, he's, he's about halfway there, yeah. I, I feel like Enryu, they're going to feel a lot more confident with making these aggressive movements when the BKB is up on Enryu. They're going to make the movement anyway, but I feel like it's more of a, a forced response as to some as opposed to something that they actually want to do. Radiant self. On Natsumi, not wanting to reveal anything about his positioning. Luckily enough, it's a GD. It might no. be a bit greedy. Oh, they give it to Yopaj, actually. They saw, assuming. they saw. It was underneath the Observer Ward as well, so they knew that they were in the area. Good quick response coming up from Palace there. We have Lena as well building into this machine gun sort of build. Builds BKB, the boots to travel into the Dragonlance next. Is also going for that damage tone as well, so we'll see. Aim can continue on for Yopage could be a little bit too much damage for Execration to deal with unless they can jump and catch her on the back line. Still though, the Cold Embrace is just going to nullify everything. Yeah. I, 
I'm gonna keep saying it until the cows come home. RR needs to die if Neon have any kind of chance of winning a lot of these team fights. Or he needs to be in a terrible position. But I feel like he's shown that that's not gonna be the case for him. Roche would help though. Lines drawn though on the minimap. Smoke up just from two, I believe. Nico and Yoe are the only ones caught underneath it. Radiant's top tower is under attack. actually going. You're on this observable they board. <laughs> I thought it was happening already. He backpacked his infused raindrops wanting to go for the snatch. Slowing this one down a lot. I mean, we've had some crazy, crazy game one and game two. All right, now Radiant's top elimination match again. Attack. They're just going to... Gonna play this one a little bit more slow here. 21 kills, about to be 24 minutes into it. You can feel the nerves, right? Yeah. Like normally if this was a pub game, you would be sitting back on your slider comfortably farming up the rest of your BKB. He's not that far away. He's only about 1500 gold away or so, but just the threat of losing the Aegis and that being the reason that you don't make it to TI is so scary for these players. Stakes are so high. I mean, one mistake Double could turn damage. this game around just completely. I mean, it's a 2,000 lead, but it really doesn't feel like it's that much in it at the moment. And my, my eyes are on if Natsumi, if he can get this extra level in the reincarnation before our fight breaks out. I mean, it's about 17 and a quarter at the moment. And Execration, you can see them attempt to smoke previously. In fact, it's Neon that are moving up aggressive right now. Top, Natsumi, they found the target. You were highlighting the Wyvern, but there's no follow-up. Kimberly is not nearby. So we're unable to deal with the Wyvern to start. Nico, great BKB. CTM. CTM. He's too far away from the team. This yes, we're going to try and play around the high ground. They're going to be careful. Going up to the left track, that's so difficult because you've got the Wyvern and the Infest bonus health as well. And they buy back on CTM for Execration. They're happy with that. You get the kill, you force the buyback, you gotta reset. They will look to force Dyer's Roshan. I believe the pings are coming out though. They'll even scout yeah, with the arrow. Or... The arrow? I believe it was just the one BKB popped. They didn't use it on the slider, they didn't use it on the Lena. It was used on Doom. So be a little bit careful for that. Not that they have a crap load of lockdown already. It's a kind of slow lockdown, right? Until at least uh, CTM has his blink dagger, but he's still a mile away. Again, we just back the farm game. Slow it down. How is the life still going? How do we feel like Palace is going to fare as well as, as this one towards the uh, late stage? Hold that thought. Hold and the ground, the Wyvern. Do they have the instant lockdown? It's not there though, Finger of Death, they'll try it. Earthspike as well, only to only run because of the rage protection from Palos. He's able to get the curse off, he might still tick off to the Viper Strike, he, he will. But Enryu, come on right click, gonna get to safety, he's so low, double leap feeders, he will find him. A kill off the starter, so we're one for one. They're gonna fly back on the Wyvern, they wanna try and heavily commit for the fight. Yopage, Laguna, Blade, Palos, he's so far away from the rest of the team. Infest, great use of that. Opens the Ray Fire Blast and he's okay. A couple of times now where the Wyvern has actually been caught out in an uh, inopportune position, but just the rest of the team not there to be able to punish it. Not on the same page here for Neon, it looks like. This is T2 Tower. He's going to end up falling. Allison's got the Skardi. Ashtrak has almost got the Sunjin Kaya. Nico as well. Gives them the Roche control. Yep, that it does. With Outposts, it's going to make it very, very easy now for them to control this top side. You mentioned before about the importance of having, like, the level 18 on Natsumi before they took that encounter. I, I, I get it, you know, you want to make sure that you've got the uh, the reincarnation being only on the 40 second cooldown, but I feel like it only really has its maximum effectiveness when you've got it and you have buyback, because you're up against a Lashrak, you're up against a Lifestealer. Oh, actually, they get the... That's a huge kill. Enormous. That is going to open up Roche for them. You know that the Wyvern can't take this team fight, and they're instantly just going to book it for there. I was not watching that. What is he doing around that area without buyback? Yeah, the, the life seal was there with him as well, but it's just... I'm not sure Radiant what he was trying to do position-wise. Maybe the award, but... You've got to let the Verona do that, you know? You've got leaps. You've got buyback. Right. Coming over. 
goes out. Oh, just misses that to me. Three, take jump. But now there's no wyvern to be able to protect your way. They need the effects. The palace, he's running head fast on top of the back line. Lean is protected. BKB out of the doom, so they don't have to worry about that. They need to worry about the lash. And she's down out of the count. So is the doom as well. Aegis is going to get picked up. Palace, oh, got it. steals it. But I don't know if it's going to matter. They'll kill him off the once. And they should be able to do it a second time as well. Rage is available. LSA timing a little bit too late, but he can't TP out because he has to go up against the bashes. Oh, the the leap. He doesn't have any more though. EDZ is the one leap enough. It is. Okay, Pellet snags the ages and gets away with his life. The strong fight for Neon. Strong fight for Neon, still very important the fact that you're able to take that away from the Leshrac and one of the best users of the Aegis in the entire game. They don't get it for themselves, but they save absolute disaster by taking out that completely pushing the event. Yeah, you just emphasis that they have that hero is down. They they A very scary prospect to be going up against if you're already low. Wonder if any of those neutral items could come into play as this game goes later on as well here for the Opage. You know, we've seen already 60 minute game one blister is a big factor there to help out with that CTM Enchantress. I know we're only 30 minutes in, of course. Who knows if we're ever going to make it to that stage, but it's always a nice thing to highlight. Maybe this tier four neutral items could help out in seven minutes. 533 movement speed now, by the way, on our Lena. Oh, so scary. I, I just... You need... You've got War Stomp on Doom. Uh, what's that? Two seconds plus the point. So 2.6 with the Infernal Blade as well. I'm just... Radiance I, I don't know if that's enough. You need... Need more of a follow-up. Poor CTM. He's still level 11. That is... <laughs> That is not ideal, you know, you want those two points at least into your ultimate. This could be a huge fight. Nico, great counter initiation now with the Cold Embrace. They keep our alive and that feeding down on top of the starter. He's going to end up falling just before Finally he finishes. And now Nico as well. Doom is out, but it's still going to cost him his life. Here's the last couple of right clicks. Don't turn. Palace stunned up. Natsumi, his hot pursuit. He's found his target. He's trying to lock on top of it. They don't have the control, so instead they'll just turn. Last track. No man's land stuck out on top of the river. BDZ, Palace, they just have to retreat away. Cut their losses, they will. But it cost them the less track as Joel weighs down and out of the count. 70 seconds on the deck. Boy, again, like, I was like, how is Wyvern not dying? He's sitting on like 100 HP for so long. Radiant, Even all that damage coming attack. through from the Lena wasn't enough to do it. But structures are fortified. Eventually, the stragglers Dyer's arrived. CTM, he's going to go towards this top side of the map. Make sure that, like, he can't impact this tower push. He needs to get that level two on his ultimate so that he can have a bit more of a presence in these team fights at more regularity. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. A T2, slither of health. But now, still, I mean, it's a net worth lead for Execration, but see how strong Neon are feeling right now these past couple of minutes. This is top four we're talking about here. Top four in the C qualifiers that they're playing for. Going up against either Boom or Galaxy Racer, who will be next series, I believe, that's uh, being cast on this channel. And then the winner of both of these series will be playing the third game of the day. So it's a lot of Dota. I mean, can you imagine playing one of these series, let alone two of them? Like, these players, I don't want to say would be mentally done, but it, this is exhausting, right? You, you could grind out 10 pubs a day and not be as tired as you would be after just one of these series. Yeah, these, you, 
emotional toll that a series like this will have on the players. It's, it's so incredibly worth it. You can't even put it into words on what a tournament like the International can give one of these players. $40 million potentially. Two qualification spots for Radiant Southeast Asia if you smoke up. And that shadow actually is first. not really an easy target to jump on though. AC no. picked up 2800 health, 23 Wraith King, reincarnation. Yeah, they were trying to make a bit of a play for the back lines, but they have no vision. And I mean, let's see who's carrying the vision. It's mostly on the Wyvern. And we've seen it time and time again, he cannot be going first into these you know, enemy bottlenecks when you don't know where the enemy team is. So he's having to play super defensively. I would want to give over that Observer Ward to the Marana just so that you can potentially get something super deep up. Got the buyback, got much more escape potential than a Wyvern does, and the team fight doesn't crumble if a Marana dies. It does if the Wyvern does. Are there any items that oh, we're geez. about to see picked up? In fact, Yopage just gets the MKB. What about Radiant, though? Plus AC, okay. Double damage. Gonna be nice. Oh. Having that extra minus armor. I mean, it's, again, it's just gonna be so important to it needs to initially delete whichever one of these heroes. He's really, really disconnected from the team. They don't have CTM as well, but again, going on the Wraith King, scary prospect, so they stop, and they stop as soon as they jump in. Yeah, I mean, he's not going for that maximum farm efficiency anymore, right? He's gone the 16 strength, doesn't care about all these skeletons spawning because, you know, you're against a Leshrac, you're against a Doom, you're against a Wyvern Splinter Blast. They're going to be able to get off these spells to deal with your skellies. Much rather just put it all into your own survivor. Yeah, it's an even game here as we head to the latest stages. Roshan. Feels like that's what either team are waiting for, Allies potentially up in a minute 13. Yumi, can you see how far forward he's positioning? He, okay, this time he's really split from the team. They're up top by the outposts, whereas he's down bottom farming. Radiance to try and get connected. Night time. You gotta get to the safety of your team. No punch would be even better if they were able to get it onto him, but no. Don't get that chance. You've also got this wave kind of pushing in on the bot side. 35 minutes, so the double siege creeps are starting to spawn. So I wonder if Neon, with their... I want to say they've got slightly superior split push, given that they've got the Wraith King, they've got the skeletons that can just march on down the lane. That ghost push, if you will. Ballsy, though. <laughs> just walks into Wraith Fire Blaster and walks away. It's the mental game right there. Who knows, maybe next time? Instead of just a Wraith Fire Blast, it's an Earth Spike, a Duna, Finger of Death. He's just keeping them on their toes, it's not Sumi. Well, he's going to be kept on his toes here. They showed up top, so they're well aware there's no backup. First life taken away instantly, and they still have the Doom as well. Oh, 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 oh what a blink. That Sumi's out of there. Still no caught the either. Oh, they caught it. Ryu, he ate the arrow. No, you don't want to keep your support alive. And Ryu is so important now. But the backup is more than cause. Your part will tear apart his support. BKB has to be committed. An even better three-man LSA. Radiant. The damage has been dealt. And the creep wave is pushing. You just highlighted the double catapult wave. They take it T2. That's all they want. Prize is mine. They're considering the fact that Roche might be up. Have to be careful here, Natsumi. Yeah. Five just yet. Speedy's dead. Yep. Finger dead. First and even the cool problem. The brace was used. He's going to buy back. Take a look at how important this fight is. Buy back from Slardar, recognizing this could change the game. We take this victory into Roche. Could give us a chance to make it to TIs. Natsumi. He's going to lose the reincarnation, but Yopaj is freely hitting on the high gun. Natsumi still going to be careful. He needs to back up with the demon. Can't split up timing. And Ryu, he just put back. Rims out. He'll deal with Nico. But at least he's still able to use the ultimate before he dies. It's all Palace, though. Tearing apart the neon lineup. So deal with Slardar. That's a high back. Down for a hundred seconds. Long ass Roche respawn, though. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to get anything out of it. Without this Doom, being able to just run in and be this beast on the front lines, you're having to play a lot more scared. You can see here, Ara, he's going to show on the top side. Could this prompt a response coming out from the Neon guys? I know it's a, a 3v4 situation, but we've seen before that they feel pretty confident even when they're down enough. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Feels like Yo, he's got the blink dagger. Zoom? I think he's trying to bait with this illusion. Yeah. 
<laughs> Who's baiting who? Paragon Palos. Tower has oh, another point the flicker, on it. The flicker for the lash. That's insane, actually. DD bottled over on Palos. Oh my. They're actually gonna fight with this Palos. He's on I'm still down. He's gonna get popped. We'll protect him. He's actually stuck this on top. This is an axe shot, Lash, remember. I want to make sure they're fighting around all these choke points, completely you know, removing an area of initiation out of Neon's arsenal. 25 seconds on that Roche timer. So unfortunate that it's a, a long Roche spawn because it's a little bit faster than you would have been able to use that dieback on the slider, but once you have 25. Auto strike cooldown, two second cooldown for your Wraith King. Highest level in the game. Behind Roche that, Sumi. Is up. That's fine. Items, shard, cheese, and ages is available from the second Roche and Execration. The first to scout this out. They've also got an incredible ward around the northern side of this Roche pit. So that high ground advantage. And how do you walk into the pit? Constant split burst is going to make it so difficult. He's even got the radius as well with the power. Got to get it onto the back line somehow. Do they even have a, a smoke or anything like that? I don't, I don't think they do. Light out. No way. Ward. The wards are going to come through. Still, I mean, the left track. Split burst are covering the, the pit heat arrow. He's on the front. Wraith King on the back line. Nico. Divide and conquer. On top of the Lena. It's a big target. Look at the Lena turn. Kiko is dead down. Another reincarnation. They're going to try and look to turn and fight this. A buyback coming through. He's not going to have his ultimate for the second line. But Enry Yu, he's caught out. The Split Earth, they're layering the ground. Neon, they just can't get in the midst of it. And Yul's controlling up Genuel as well. They're going to lose three heroes here into the TP. Maybe. Oh, the Nico time. I'm stunned. As three will fall, now you can take the second Roche of the game here. Yeah, they're completely giving up on the Roche now on Neon. Natsumi tipping down to the bottom side, trying to push it out, create some distractions around the map. He's got a bunch of That's how much this Wyvern is causing them, issue, causing them issues in this game. He needs to make sure they're getting the silence, and they're just wiping them out instantly with the combination coming out there from Yopage. He's tired of getting doomed. He's going into that Lincoln. You do see, though, like, even if he gets doomed, uh, there was the same occasion that fight. He got doomed, but there was that no one to jump top and top just to stop the Lena from right clicking. So he was like, all right, you do me, but I do so much damage. As long as I have Fury Soul Stacks, I'm going to stand my ground and try and right click you down. Dyer's top feel like they've got to give this up. No, uh, maybe not. They might be able to shove it out. Sanaba. It wouldn't be a top four decider unless it came down to the wire like this. Neon on the ropes. Desecration. They can taste it. They can taste moving on to the next round. The semi finals, if you will. Still feels like a mile away. How. Are you a fan of the Aghanim Shard from the Doom? Uh, could have been a different target you would have preferred, or did you like this for Nico? Mm. Else is there? Uh, I mean, open wounds on mm. Lifestealer can be kind of nice. The slow, just being able to kite around, particularly the Wraith King, is going to be good. Wyvern is okay. Mirana's is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I never want to see Mirana get it until it's literally cannot go to anyone else. And even then, I would probably sell it or I give it to Mirana. I guess with that Ag shot on the Doom now, I've, I've been harping on kind of the stun lock and, and anyone following up with the. Multi. So now having just a little bit of extra stun, and you kind of have that old level death as well in there, working for the shards. So we'll see how that extra 0.6 seconds of stun is is going to come into play, depending on the uh, depending on the level. A tithe to the impurities. I mean, they're just holed up inside their base. They realize they can't go anywhere right now on uh, Neo. How's a buyback status looking like? Wraith King doesn't have it. Lena doesn't have it. Slada doesn't have it. Lion doesn't have it. Plus five Viper does. So, you know, big victory there.
do it the methodical way. Bottom T2 tower. Last remaining out of tower here. OB Neon. Themselves are looking to try and get out at the base. Maybe a little bit of push control, some waves as well. And you still have the top of the net worth here on the Wraith King. And lean off shortly behind as well. The high ground now under siege. Get that puddle down, Slider. Get from the back line. Gets rid of the block one instantly. The has to be careful of his positioning. Nico is standing right next to RR, making sure he can save him if there's any kind of attempt to get it onto the back lines. What are we looking like repel them. wise to is the only one with the gem? So a bit of extra Oh, to me? Did they saw Less Track actually TPR? It's instantly trying to connect back up with the team. Both sides scans connect. They'll know. Like, if they were looking on the minimap, they would have seen their creep wave disappear somehow, even though he's under the cover of the Moonlight Shadow. But still, I think they're just wanting to be patient. It's only a minute and a half away from this uh, Aegis being reclaimed. So, Tier 3 Tower, yes, it's basically gone, but I feel like you, you don't want to be fighting into that double line. Satanic coming out next for Palos. Quite nice for him. It's gotten to the stage where, like... Ugh gonna need to sell one of these other items soon of course the ages are gonna be reclaimed but sell your phase boots pick up something even better what do you feel like one of those items could be here that he's looking for mm. Dyer's bottom tower yeah, quick. i mean it could be great if you could get onto the back line somehow with like a swift blink but I feel like a big part of their potential is standing near your way, so that in case he gets gone on, he's still got that infest power. Feels like, I guess, if you want to jump on the back, just infest in a brother like Nico. Maybe you can be that carrier instead, and instead, like, possibly, most. I wonder if he would even consider going the Axe Blessing, just because it, you know, reduces the infest cooldown to 20 seconds, increases the cast range by a lot, so that you can be a bit more of that, that backline menace. Regeneration. You're gonna to get to the stage where he's eight, one, and nine, 492 last hits. He is just getting out of control, and <laughs> you're running out of slots. It's eventually gonna to get to the stage where you may as well buy blessing, you may as well buy a shard. Why not? They just reclaimed. They use the moonlight shadow, probably just to retreat. You would hope. Fake back going on. Go. Oh, Yopage might walk underneath the observe ward that uh, Ray didn't have in the Tinker position. He's right there, though. Smoke up. Straight into Nico. They find the time. Awesome. That's exactly what they need. With the help of Palace's damage, they'll kill off the Lena. Now she does have a buyback to rejoin them. Let's see what this is going to be able to provide them. It's a Ray team getting control. Actually, turn. They won't have a way to wipe the turn. Fine. They deal with the recalation with the timing. No, nice BKB. Now, Jimmy, he eats the arrow. And up with the blood thorns out. Palace moves off. It's looking the clash. And they're going to control him. No life steal. And now, no damage. As Joe Pash back alive, shredding apart. Yo, wait. Look at that machine. She ain't gonna go to work. Boot down on execration, but it does cost them a couple of buybacks there. As Lena has to rejoin them to take that fight. Oh boy, <laughs> this is it. Like it could go either way. Every single one of these team fights. Yes, it's a great initiation coming through, being able to focus him down, but give him space, and he is able to absolutely rip you apart. Cheese was used there as well, and it only bought the Lashrek about two seconds of extra life. Now they're actually thinking of walking up the high ground here. They push really fast. That's going to TP top. He's 35 seconds away from TP. They'll get spooked because of this buyback, but buyback that was forced because the dude wasn't there, wasn't able to actually join in and be part of that team fight. Look at the net worth as well. Poor Henry, you. My lord, he had such a laning stage but this slaughter just fell off a cliff like the marana is actually keeping up in the net worth we're just unfortunately you know tsunami brought up the factor of the late game doom you know, win percentage that he has at the moment in dota and the scaling potential that you have at the moment over nryu is through the roof now keep in mind that he's still going to provide some value with the corrosive haze i wonder 
And I, I think you need that shard though, because it feels like he's not getting many heroes caught with the haze. So it really feels like his value right now is just get the ulti out and let the other heroes go to work. Radiant he's Oscar. getting some decent crushes off, but yeah, like you yeah. can only hit so many people at a time. And he's oh, had uh, Yopage be a little bit indecisive about what he wants to go. I was about to say he should probably sell that Yule Scepter. You know, you don't have buyback. You need to have something that's going to be a bit more impactful. And at this stage of the game, I don't think Yule Scepter is that one. He's gone the Shadow Blade into the Silver Edge. So he wants to have a little bit of that extra survivability. Not going to be great against Nico, who's got the jam already. I was kind of thinking maybe just an Aeon Disc. Like, yeah, sure, that's... it ruins your right-click damage potential, but it feels like you need that extra form of escape coming out from the very beginning of the fight. You gotta keep in mind, like, he, he just bought back as well, so that Aeon Disc offers another layer of protection. It's got Lincolns, but is that gonna be enough here? Also, Refresher on Doom, that's a scary prospect. Double Doom opportunities here. Double Doom. So mid laners, no buyback, Wyvern, no buyback. So advantage Neon for now, with a relatively long Roche spawn again. David just wanting to keep us in suspense. Running uh, another 60 minute game. Are we up to eight or seven now here for the balls? Right. Seven so far. Seven, seven. That's still a lot. That's a lot That's of late game donors. Crazy, man. Yeah. I know we were uh, watching China here. Those games go imagine way if, too late. Imagine if T1 was playing as well. Probably some of the best late game Dota yeah. players in the world. They, their late game capability, the execution, just like them, Execration and Neon are doing so, so well to be able to execute in these past couple of late games that we've seen so far in this series. And still looking to head that way as I mean, we're about to hit the 50 minute mark and it, only 3,000 net worth lead for Radiant. Once again, it feels like it's all on this Roche fight. Something that we've seen through the entirety of the series. Previously, that less track split Earth was way too much for Neon to handle. Just layering the ground and making it so difficult for you to position. Yeah, for sure. Getting a bit lucky with this uh, rune here. The Illusion rune going to be able to push out that bottom side of the map. Make... Uh... Execration, perhaps second guess up. themselves with the best. Yeah, but he jumps up on the back line. They haven't found the Lena though. So they have to try and do the bottom. Andrew instantly he's just running to the opposite direction for the BKBs. They pop the raid fire blast. Luke still has that second round no to do as he gets it caught up the Lena. Nico, he's catching the blink with the radiance. The Lotus Orb is out. They're gonna be able to protect your and now that too. He's still pushing him further and further away. Reincarnation's being popped. He's still got the BKB for the second life as well. Arrow. Holding the high gun, arrows on the mark, and Ryu back to join him. Oh, no, the left track to the high gun, finger of death, what a curse. Flick it down, he's gonna make it back up, that's a die back. Natsumi falls as well, what a curse. He's able to rejoin them, they need a reset. Neon, cut your losses and get out of the area. Zhao, try to stalk and get away, but the trickster cloak is not enough. Time for Roche to be back up and running, but you've still got a Doom available. This is the power of that late game Doom potential as he picks up the gem. The walk on back in. Both, uh, no, no, just the repression. Damn, it feels like this game has been going on for a lot longer than it has. There is some crazy win condition opportunities now for Execration. Only the Lion has to buy back here. CTM. He's got it for us, the eighth lens as well, but we saw Natsumi had to buy back there, and Ryu had to buy back, Shen Yuo had to buy back, and now you're going up against the Ages on Palos. Cheese as well. I'm trying to see who's got that. Uh backpacked on the life sealer and the refresher shard. Who other than the doom to hold? You're forgetting about the most important item of all, the Wind Waker on BTC. Done his job of pushing in the top lane somewhat, and of course we've got a level 27 Yoe, so those Diabolic E explosions are just going to melt these barracks. Top they want to fight before Enryu. I think you have to give up this top set of racks, especially how do you commit to split earth like that? 
Maybe you go for a mass smoke wrap around. It's like one down. Uh -oh. Damage. No wind waker. <laughs> oh no, it's so hard to commit. You got caught in brace save, potentially an infest save, wind waker save now. So difficult. But Neon is all back alive and with bot pushed in with the catapult wave, they're gonna have to reset and choose a different angle. They can do this. Yeah, just get the TD going forward, you know. It's Why just not? really one wave that you have to concern yourself with. That's me. He's level 28, so has a little bit of that extra skeleton attack damage. Not going to be impactful so far. He has finished up that nullifier, though. He bought back previously. He's backpacked his Packing radiance. Radiance. No boots. I mean, you're just going to switch out the blink dagger after you, uh, you blink on him. Let's have the refresher. He actually popped the refresher orb, so he still has the shard available. So that two more rounds of dooms. If for Nico. Set of racks claim bot. And the last set is mid. Eventually be going up against Megas if Execration stick around. Once again, a layer there on slot with the split earth. Which makes it so difficult to get the jump. Henry is going for the back line. Who can he catch? Finally get this wyvern. Oh, how do they start? Jump in, Natsumi. So that's a reincarnation of the dooms out there. Ain't nobody catch out the Luna, but the double four stuff needs to get back to safety with the wall stuff. They got Wyvern. He's gonna control. He's gonna do the reincarnation. Natsumi instantly with the beacon. be popping. They're gonna fall. Yopaj, he doesn't have a buyback. Nico will still fall. The backline, Enryu, EKB, TPR. Okay, Wyvern. I'm gonna be able to rejoin them here. Without Yopaj. How can they hold? If they can. Let's see. A loss. Mega Creeps Gaming. Be one game away from eliminating Neon. Go away. But the BKB, Natsumi. Forced off once again. And we back to Great Creeps. Yeah. Right? They're walking on Natsumi. They're going to be careful. What occurs? It's even better than the crush. It's on to three. Straight on top of the throne. The pull up with all the damage. Natsumi. He'll kill off the Viper. No buyback. CTM's down his wall. Before he can get the kicker in death. He's going to buy back to rejoin them. Another three man crush. The buyback coming out. For the reincarnation. There's no BKB. Natsumi. A four star back to safety. But the Raid King's getting targeted. Raid King's down. Execration! They might have just done it and they have! The cheese are top! 55 minute game! They'll eliminate Neon! Oh man, what, what a long road to get there!